we handle it are different. Um, Follow up. We don't have any background check under state law, do we? Um, we do for pistols and revolvers. We don't have the same background checks for uh, in New Hampshire that is required by the federal law. Yes and no. We have, we are, we, we do, we administer it. So there is a law that New Hampshire dealers have to, um, for pistols and revolvers, have to do the exact same background check that's done, except for they call the state police instead of calling the feds. One last follow-up. Follow-up. If this bill became law, we would not require these manufacturers of guns being sold to New Hampshire residents, manufactured in New Hampshire, to do background checks, would we? It is possible they would not be required. To, wait, wait, to finish. Uh, not required for for rifles and shotguns. For pistols and revolvers, I believe I may be wrong, but I believe the the, the, pro, the requirement would probably remain in place. But remember, this is also only for those firearms manufactured in New Hampshire that stay in New Hampshire. For the for, that's going to be only a few percent of firearms, probably. It's not. This isn't going to be huge. But this will help. This will um, be a small step towards fixing fixing a very very big problem. Thank you, Chairman. If this was passed, might not a New Hampshire manufacturer produce the same firearm in two different sets, one marked in New Hampshire for local consumption only, and one uh, designed for interstate commerce? And would that not? Um, the, yes, that's possible. I actually think it is unlikely. Um, because the BATF is taking such a strong position, a manufacturer who wants to trade in fi interstate is probably, you know, it has to have a federal firearms license. Um, and, you know, if they're going to be manufacturing, I believe it's a, a seven. Um, fe a, uh, to do that, if they, to obtain that license, if they, while the BATF still holds that these laws do not provide the protection we are trying to, we're seeking to provide, if they were to sell a firearm um, to a New Hampshire resident's resident without following all the federal laws, the BATF would probably um, revoke their, their manufacturer's license. So while it is theoretically possible, I don't think it practically will happen. Um, you, it, it's, po it's possible, and maybe I would love to see it happen, if, but I suspect that especially big companies like SIG and Thompson and uh, others that, that do Ruger probably are not going to risk losing their manufacturer's license um, to make a few firearms for, for New Hampshire residents only. Let's have the last question here from Representative Cohen. Um, as a sort of follow-up to the Whitehead's question, um, given the fact that this bill requires that all of the substantial parts are manufactured here in the country, and that you're talking about a very limited number of manufacturers that might be interested in this, it would be to their advantage to create similar items to what's commercially available. Um, because the only part that is required to be marked is a central part of the firearm, such as the receiver or frame. So if there are multiple parts to the, to the gun, um, while it might not be the intent to allow manufacturing of parts, I'll allow SIG importing them from Germany, would it be possible for someone here in New Hampshire to create a sig -like that would use parts that are available as long as the main part was stamped made in New Hampshire. Uh, the reason I ask that specifically is because it says that can be manufactured without the inclusion of any significant parts imported from another state. So if I manufacture all of the parts, but it just so happens that some of those parts are available, the only part we're saying must be manufactured in New Hampshire seems to be 
the part that's stamped because as long as the other parts are manufactured, there's no requirement here that says 100% of the parts must be manufactured. Can you address that a little bit? Um, well, I guess I think I follow you. Just <laughs> bear with me a second. Um, I, I think the issue would become is, is once you include parts that have traveled in interstate commerce, you run the risk of, um, of, uh, of losing the protections of the statute. You know, it's not, we, we do make a point um, later on in the bill uh, that if it's an accessory and you add it on and the accessory was regulable um, and that traveled in interstate firearm, interstate commerce, it doesn't change um, change the firearm, um, make the firearm therefore subject to regulation. I don't believe the same would, would follow for parts. It may be, may be able to be doable in the sense that it wouldn't be detected. You know, it'd be hard to prove those other parts. And, and, and as far as whether the guns are going to be exactly the same, whether the firearms are going to be exactly the same or very similar, I suspect they are. You know, um, I wouldn't, would be, you know, surprised if someone, if when they, when people start taking advantage of this, doesn't start manufacturing a 1911 clone, you know, um, specifically here. It's going to look, look and operate and function exactly the same, and probably the parts will even be interchangeable. It's just, I don't suspect the same company will be doing it, um, just because of the law, the issues with um, the loss, of, potential loss of uh, the federal firearms license. We have two more. We have two more speakers and a, and a bunch of thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Do you have any written testimony? I uh, passed out a letter from the president of the New Hampshire Firearms okay. Coalition to, to everybody who is. Uh, Thank you very much. Every day. I'd like to call Representative Hall. Please.